Y'all ready for math? All right, folks, Mr. Berto back with another uh, pre-calculus video here. This one should be shorter than some of the other ones. Okay, sorry about some of the length there, but sometimes we just need to talk about, uh, you know, housekeeping things. Speaking of which, I hope everybody is doing well at home. Um, please join my remind, join my remind, join my remind, okay, and text any friends, um, you know, that haven't joined it yet. I think that's the way we're going to end up uh, submitting classwork. There's nothing for certain right now the way we're going to grade things. I know some people are concerned about their third quarter averages. Um, what I'm thinking about doing is that um, topic that we were doing before uh, school was uh, postponed, the one in the derivative part two. Thinking about sending out a take-home test on that, having you guys send it back through Remind, and we'll use that for the end of your third quarter grade. Not so sure yet, okay? So try not to have too much uh, anxiety about it, okay? But maybe I'll be able to get that thing out on Friday and make it do, you know, next week on like Monday or Tuesday, something like that or maybe uh you know give it out on monday i don't know we'll see but hopefully i'll be able to post it on friday anyway um let's get our lesson going okay yesterday we spoke about the second derivative test so we're gonna get a little recall action going recall okay and uh don't forget we have the first derivative test okay you know the first derivative test we're gonna say of f of x all right, remember, that's just the collection of the information the first derivative tells you about a function. It's not specifically called the first derivative test. This will tell you where f is either increasing or decreasing, because f's derivative is either positive or negative, respectively. And if you know when a function is increasing or decreasing, you will know when that function f has extrema. So maxes and mins. Believe it or not, there's officially a second derivative test in calculus, not really what we're going to write down here. You know, our second derivative test is just going to be the information the second der derivative gives you about the function f. You'll never justify it. Because of the second derivative test, if uh, function f is concave up, you know, from negative 2 up to 0, it doesn't work that way. There's actually a second derivative test in calculus that's officially called the second derivative test. Believe it or not, it tells you about extrema. It actually uses the first derivative and the second derivative in concoction. Something we'll speak about next year, not this year. You know, our second derivative test is just the information, um, you know, that uh, the, uh, the second derivative of function f gives you about that function f. It will tell you where f is concave up or concave down. And that's respectively where f double prime is positive or f double prime is negative. Remember, concavity doesn't tell you if you're increasing or decreasing. It tells you how you're increasing or decreasing, okay? Is the rate of increase getting bigger or is the rate of increase getting smaller, okay? And if you actually change from, uh, you know, concavity, concave up to concave down or vice versa, that indicates an inflection point. <laughs> Put a little, uh, you know, exclamation point right there. You know, this whole uh, coronavirus thing, they're talking about the, this curve, right? You know, we're trying to, to flatten this curve so the apex isn't really quite that high. They're saying that right now in New York, the amount of cases is increasing, but the rate at which the amount of cases are coming in is actually starting to decrease. And that means you're actually past this inflection point right here. You can see that the function's increasing this whole time, but here it's increasing concave up. It's increasing at an increasing rate. And here it's increasing concave down. It's increasing at a decreasing rate. So that's where we are. We're about here in New York. Okay, eventually this apex right here, hopefully it will be as low as possible. And then, you know, um, you know, we'll be able to lower this threat. But math in a real world situation right there, okay? Uh, calculus is a study of functions. You could certainly have a function represent um, the amount of people infected with the coronavirus. Anyway, um, you know, as far as the homework was concerned, I really hope that you tried it out. Okay, the first derivative test pieces, you should be good at by now. I know the sketching can be difficult, but, you know, first derivative, you should be able to find those critical points. Remember, a critical point that of a function f that's going to be where f prime equals zero or f prime does not exist. So important, okay? Sometimes they just want critical x values. Plug them back into the original, get critical points. Any type of point, you always plug into the original function. <laughs> then, I can't stop very loud. Maybe I could just like hit this chair. That's where I draw the line. The f prime line, okay? Which is going to tell you where f prime is positive or negative, which tells you where f is increasing or decreasing it doesn't tell you where f is positive people are like, oh f is positive here no f prime is positive which means the slope of f of pos is positive the rate of change of f is positive that's why f is actually increasing 
Um, anyway, and then we should be able to figure out Extrema as well. And now the second derivative piece, this is what was new. It's really the same thing as the first derivative test, only um, you use the second derivative. And it's a lot more clean, okay? Um, you don't have to worry about this dummy sketch down here. I mean, this pushy sketch. I mean, this dummy sketch. You know, the first derivative line is always much more complicated than the second derivative line. Just remember, if f double prime is, is negative, f is concave down. If f double prime is positive, f is concave up. And only when f double prime changes sign do you see that inflection point. If this went from minus to minus, you would not have an inflection point, okay, at the x value of 2. So critical points, it's all about the first derivative being equal to 0 or non-existent. Inflection points, at first, f double prime, the second derivative, has to be equal to zero or non-existent, but there also needs to be a sign change. We haven't seen it yet on the f prime line, but many times a function will go from increasing to increasing again. I mean, we've seen that type of thing on graphs before. You know, just because you level off to a slope of zero doesn't mean that you need to actually change the sign of the derivative, okay? It could be something like this. The second, you know, f prime is equal to zero or non-existent, it's a critical point. You don't have to worry about a sign change, uh, whether or not there's a sign change in the f prime line, but for an inflection point, you always have to worry about whether or not there's a sign change on the f double prime line. Remember, any type of point, critical point, inflection point, end point, you plug back into the original. Okay, and now you know more information, okay? You know from negative infinity to two, the function's concave down. Try to think about an n, and you could see from negative infinity all the way to two here, this function looks like an n when I sketched it. See that n right there? It increases looking like an n, it decreases looking like an n. Then you hit that inflection point right here, then you can see it looks like a u, yoo hoo the rest of the way, okay? So that's really what's going on. Number eight had those endpoints, okay? You know, a little bit of a ridiculous absolute extrema. You know, remember, uh, as far as endpoints are concerned, I didn't actually write here where you had an absolute max and absolute min in the previous problem because these arrows shooting infinitely upward and infinitely downward, there's no absolute extrema there. But here there is, we have our endpoints, okay? So make sure you can identify what kind of extrema is at an endpoint. You know, if you're at the left endpoint and you increase immediately, you're a min. If you decrease immediately, you'd be a max. The opposite is true on the right endpoint, okay? Um, and make sure you plug back into the original to get those endpoint values. Then you compare your maxes, the y values, whichever is bigger is going to be the absolute max. Here we compared the y values, and they both were the same for the mins, okay? That's why those are both absolute mins. Second derivative test, hopefully pretty easy here. You can see a sign change, so we know there's an inflection point at 0, 3 in this case. Um, and it also happens to be the y-intercept. So hopefully the sketch afterward, not too terrible. Try not to worry so much about the sketch. It's actually not the most important part of these problems. This right here is the most important part of these problems, okay? They don't really have you sketch all that much on the AP anymore. Let's do this. Let's do one problem today. So really today we're, we're if you want to put a topic sentence down, we're continuing with the second derivative test, okay? So it's kind of like the second derivative test, uh, day two. Start! Second derivative test. Day two. I did that star. I got to have you guys doing stars. Julia, can you give me a star out there? Thank you. Okay, so anyway, second derivative test day two. Let's talk about other types of functions. It's the whole world isn't polynomial all the time, even though polynomial functions you see quite often with these types of problems. But if you take a look in your packet, and I believe we're up to lesson 1.4 right now, but the packet is still the 1.2 uh, curve sketching packet. Take a, a look at number 11. 11, that's what really loud amplifiers go up to. The only person who gets that joke is probably Harrington and Stavros. Anyway, um, you know, so now we're actually going to do everything for this function. The whole purpose of this topic is to be able to sketch without a calculator. So let's perform the first and second derivative test and see if we can get a sketch going on. And this is a radical function, a function that hangs out in California. How you doing? Totally awesome, dude. Um, so, you know, it's a little bit different than a polynomial function. And if you want to sketch any function... You got to think about where the function lives, okay? And you can get a domain for this situation right here. We did it earlier in the year. Take that radicand, it's just an algebraic representation for a number under the radical. Ensure that it equals zero or that it's positive. X greater than or equal to four. That's important. If you end up with any critical X values that are outside this domain, you're going to reject them, okay? But let's take the derivative, and maybe before you take the derivative, you realize this is really X minus four quantity to the one half power. It's a chain rule situation. Chain, 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 chain rule makes me drool. Let's drop the one half down like it's hot. 
ah, burn myself there. Uh, rewrite the x minus four, raise it to the one less, okay? One half minus one is gonna be negative one half. Don't forget to multiply by the derivative of the inside, which in this case is just equal to one. So it's kind of silly, but it won't always be that way. Then people look at this mess, they're like, I gotta figure out when it's zero or non-existent for critical x values. Maybe you wanna simplify it. The one's upstairs, the two is downstairs. Bring this x minus four downstairs. Now raise him to the positive one half power. Same thing as square rooting him. Obviously multiplying by one doesn't make a difference, but you gotta be able to simplify stuff like that. And now realize we have a fractional derivative and we dealt with this in day one. You gotta figure out where it's equal to zero and where it's non-existent. And remember a fraction is equal to zero when it's very good. Numerator is equal to zero. Good luck making one equal to zero. Poppy ain't gonna happen, okay? So there's no solution there, but a fraction is undefined when it's denominator is equal to zero. Many of you out here can just look at this and be like, yeah, when x is equal to four, this thing is equal to zero. But if you want, divide by two on both sides. Zero divided by two is still zero. Now you actually wanna what, square both sides? We're gonna square both sides, okay? And here we get back x minus four equal to zero squared, which is zero. Add four to both sides, we get that x is equal to four, okay? So that right there is gonna be a critical x value. Let's turn it into a critical point. All right, any type of point, any type of time you want position, you want to plug in the original function. That represents y values. So 4 comma f of 4. And f of 4 is pretty lit, okay? Because here, uh, 4 minus 4 is 0. Can you see that? 4 minus 4 is 0. The square root of 0 is 0. So 4 comma 0, crit point. Important things happening. And now i got to find out where the function is increasing or decreasing. That's where I draw the line. The F prime line. Okay, so let's get the F prime rocking and rolling. Tis it bounded? It actually tis on one side. Okay, the F prime line is going to start at X equals four. And it's going to end when my wife stops nagging me. Never. All right. And you're also supposed to put all critical X values on the F prime line, but it's already there. Sorry, I'm really in a good mood today. I'll never sing that again. My apologies. So that's already there, um, which is kind of interesting. So now you just look, there's one region. Okay, you plug in any number you want to F prime. I'll plug in a five. I'll use this version right here. Five minus four is one. The square root of one is one. Two times one is two. And one divided by two is positive. Okay, which means this function's always increasing. So F increasing. We'll go four up to infinity. That's the Buzz Lightyear interval. Four infinity and beyond. Wait. I think it's supposed to be to infinity <laughs> as far as when f is decreasing never okay never happens here you don't really need to write it down i just like to say that um you know and then we got to worry about extrema there can't be relative extrema okay this function never changes from increasing to decreasing or vice versa but there is an endpoint and uh, after x equals 4, f prime is positive. So the slope of f is positive. So f increases right away. That's what makes this an endpoint min. And we know it occurs at x equals 4. If you want the point, which is always good because we're going to graph it later, plug 4 back into the original. But we already did that, okay? So it occurs at the critical point at 4 comma 0. And since he's the only min, you know, and this function is just going to increase thereafter, we know this guy is the absolute min. Absolute minimum. All right, so there's the information with the first derivative test. You know, less work, not as much here, because it's not a polynomial function. You know, polynomial functions you kind of get used to. They're not really too difficult, but there are a lot of grunt work. You know, different types of functions could yield different types of results. You know, for instance, here, a function always increasing. I mean, what's that about? Um, you know, and now I want to draw, that's <laughs> why I draw another line. The F double prime line, okay? The problem is for the F double prime line, you need to actually get what f double prime of x is equal to. And some people are like, oh, <laughs> a little quotient rule action. Don't use quotient rule here. I'll use this version of the derivative to take the derivative, drop negative one half down like it's hot, multiply it by one half, that's negative one fourth. Negative ran a race, negative was moderately fast, negative one fourth, okay? Was that a tin metal? I like my tin to have SpaghettiOs inside of them. Okay, rewrite the x minus four, raise it to the one less. So one less than negative one half would be negative one half uh, minus two over two. Negative one minus two, so negative three halves. 
And don't forget to chain rule it again, okay? Even though technically the derivative of the inside is just gonna be equal to one. You know, clean it up a bit, right? Negative one upstairs, downstairs the four, bring the x minus four downstairs, now raise him to the positive three halves. Some people put a square root and then quantity cubed. It's not necessary. But another fractional derivative, so you gotta figure out where f double prime is equal to zero or where f double prime is non-existent. You know, we're gonna use that information right there um, to tell us about possible inflection point x values okay you know remember you have to see a sign change on the f double prime line um a fraction is ne uh, uh, equal to zero when its numerator is equal to zero not happening here but a fraction is undefined when its denominator is equal to zero which occurs at x equals four you know divide by four on both sides if you want to zero divided by four is still zero don't forget to cancel out the three halves power raise both sides to the reciprocal exponent Talked about that earlier in the year. Power to a power, multiply powers. So we get x minus four quantity to the first equal to zero to the two thirds, which is zero. We get x equals four. Okay, so there's only one possible inflection point value, but we already know there's not an inflection point at x equals four because when I draw the f double prime line, it's bounded on the left at x equals four, unbounded on the right. We put all possible inflection point x values on the f double prime line. He's already there. There's no way he's an inflection point. Tell me why. Very good. Okay, there's no way you could have a sign change here because there's no sign that exists to the left of four. Just plug in a five to f double prime. You'll see five minus four is one. One of the three halves is one. Four times one is four. Negative one divided by four. That's going to be negative. Okay, so apparently this function right here, f is always honk down. All right, so that's from four up to infinity. You know, if you want to say where f is concave up, never! And then we know there are no inflection points. No inflection points. And that's it for the second derivative test. And people are like, you know, what the heck is going on with this function? There's not really all that much information. Let's get a sketch going. Sketch! Okay, and as far as the sketch is concerned, we start by plotting all points, okay? Critical points, endpoints, inflection points. We got some no inflection point, but we have a critical point. And believe it or not, that's also the end point, okay? So four comma at zero, I don't know if you can see me right there, there's the end point, and here's the critical point. So four comma at zero, we got a little point action here. And then think of how simple this is to sketch, okay? This one's not difficult. We know the function is always increasing, and we know it's always increasing looking like an N, increasing concave down, which means increasing looking like an N, maybe look a little something like that. But you don't need calculus to sketch this function. Come on, f of x equals, you know, radical x, uh, radical quantity x minus four. That's just y equals radical x shifted to the right four units. We talked about this earlier in the year. We know what y equals radical x looks like, a little something like that. Let's just shift it to the right four units. Okay, so calculus, not really necessary on this problem right here. But it's nice to see how it works with different types of functions. You know, tonight for homework, You'll have another radical function that you might even know what it looks like without the calculator, but please go through the work, do the best you can, check your solution, be vigilant. This is about you folks, okay? This is the real world, this is what it's about, okay? Uh, college next year, for some of you, the year after for others, AP next year, similar to college. You have to be able to have the responsibility to put in your work. Now, if you got other factors going on at home, okay? Family comes first, health comes first, safety comes first, okay? Obviously, all right? But if you have some time, be vigilant. Don't be sitting there, you know, playing video games the entire time. Do you work? Play video games later. Um, try to budget your work too, okay? Um, you know, if you have stuff going on in other classes, if you're taking AP Chemistry and losing your mind, um, and I think in some of Harrington's videos, he's actually showing his face, which is really unfortunate. Um, you know, you could budget your work. You want to do two math lessons one day and not, not do a math lesson the other day. Fine. That's what college is about. It's about time management. You'll figure it out. Try not to freak out. Okay. Don't freak out about grades right now. I want you to know material so that you're prepared for next year and the years after. Um, anyway, so that's our video for today. I know I said it would be short. I said 19 minutes already, but there was a lot of talking there. It wasn't really all about math. So, uh, love you guys. Hope you're doing well. And, uh, you know, we'll see you soon. It's Birdo signing off.